Okay, hi everyone, I'm Layla. I'm abstinent today because I weigh a measure three meals a day off the Cambridge Grey Sheet. I write them down, I commit them to my sponsor and I don't eat in between meals no matter what. And abstinence is the most important thing in my life today. My abstinence date is the 25th of March, 2020. So I didn't want to say that, um, like it's, not, it's over a year now, but it's, you know, not that far over a year. And yeah, I just feel really blessed actually to um, be abstinent. And thank you, Anne, for asking me to share. I do have a tendency to come on these meetings and go blank. So I'm just going to try and keep it really simple. What life was like, what happened and what life is like now. <clears throat> um, and I haven't really got a timeline or anything, but I can tell you what my life was like before I come to Grey Sheets for many years before. Um, I was always on a diet, although I could never really stick to a diet, but I was always thinking about diet and thinking about calories. I had real issues around my body and weight from as early as I can remember, really always thought I was overweight. Um, always, yeah, just really unhappy with the way my body, everything was, to be honest. Um, so I joined loads of diets. I had all the diet books and all I ever really wanted was to be thin. And, you know, there was points in my life where I was thin, but I always thought I was massive. Um, I didn't really have relationships, friendships, boyfriends, I just, to be honest, I just ate, you know, my whole life was just around food. And even when my friends were going out, you know, socializing in their late teens, early twenties, I did go out, but you know, I'd always want like six weeks notice before a night out. So I could go on a diet, get my hair done, fake tan, everything had to be perfect. And of course there was I put like so much pressure on myself in fact, my, one of my friends, her boyfriends, I don't talk to her now, but they used to call me let down Layla. And actually that kind of upsets me, but that's a bit how it was because I'd want six weeks notice. And then the night before I'd say, I'm not going, I just don't feel like it. And that was just always how it was for me because I felt just, you know, after binge eating and binge eating and battering myself with food, you know, even just before I come into Grey Sheets, there was many days where I didn't even want to leave the house, let alone go on a night out all dolled up to a nightclub you know I just didn't want to leave the house so that's kind of in a nutshell how life was like for me you know I didn't have boyfriends and I had a very small circle of girlfriends and I basically just went to work thought about diets tried to diet and read diet books and spent a lot of money on just yeah empty promises and um then, oh, I forgot a little bit. So then I did, I started using drugs as well. So I started using cocaine. Well, I always use cocaine, but it got really, really bad. And then I ended up in a 12-step prog program. I'm just over two years clean and sober. So that happened, that changed my life. But then as soon as I put the drugs down, it's like the food just come back with an absolute vengeance. I think even like three or four months after being in 12 steps for drug, and drug addiction, my step sponsor in CA was in a food fellowship. And anyway, that's kind of how I got introduced. I didn't even really know about food recovery. And I went to a food fellowship and I didn't really, I, I struggled to be honest. It wasn't Grey Sheets, it was a food, another food fellowship, but I just couldn't get abstinent. I don't think I ever really got any real abstinence, to be honest, not a real honest day. And then someone I knew from that food fellowship was in Grey Sheets and introduced me to Grey Sheets. And, um, you know, I always feel like it took me a really long time to get abstinent in grey sheets, but the truth is it never really, it just, I just never ever thought I would get it. So I've come to grey sheets and I've got a sponsor straight away. And I remember even my very first day, I think I come to grey sheets and straight away, I've got like 14 days abstinence that had never happened to me, you know, and in 14 days, it was like everything changed. But what kept taking me out the door was my weight even though I couldn't diet to save my life and I was never losing weight. In fact, before I come in this time, I was rapidly gaining weight, you know? And um, my granddad died not long before I come into Grey Sheets and even my mum, my brother's a drug addict. And then we, I don't know about my mum, but anyways, we're all a bit nuts. But even around my granddad's funeral, you know, my brother's taking her rain and crack and he was like laughing at me saying, Layla, you can't stop like eating because I just couldn't, you know, like, I would eat till it was painful, till I was regurgitating. I couldn't lay down. It was anyway, but 
where was I going with this? But yeah, so grey sheet always brought me some, it just brought me instant relief. I can't explain it. It was like that obsession for me just went instantly in grey sheets. But I had, um, how do you say, almost like a poison chalice for me was the bathroom scowls. And I was always a bit dishonest, dishonest about the bathroom scowls. And I was getting them on them all the time. You know, that that didn't leave me. I don't do that today. Like I've got honest about my behaviour around the bathroom scales. So that kind of always took me out the door. And anyway, I kept coming back. You know, that's the messages and it keep coming back. And I did. And, you know, after multiple day ones and, you know, I think it almost got a little bit worse for me. I think that's just how it is once you know about this stuff and, you get a little bit, you know, even those 14 days were magic to me. Uh, but then, yeah, something, I don't know what happened. Well, I kind of do know what happened on the 25th of March. I just, I feel like for the first time, maybe ever in grey sheets, I was just open and willing to give everything a shot. You know, at the time, the lady I was working with, my sponsor, it wasn't about three calls a day. I had to speak to three people. And if I didn't speak to three people one day, the next day I was told to phone six you know, before I used to think in my head, I'd go, yeah, 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 yeah. But I wouldn't really follow through on that. Sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. And it was only really once I started following all the suggestions that something changed for me, you know, and one day turned into two days. I never thought in a million years, you know, a year and a bit ago, not in my wildest dreams did I think I'd be here now, never. And you know, like I've been struggling a bit, I think recently, not with like the food, but I have to say the last 13 months have been the most fulfilling. I'm 39 on Thursday. It's been the most fulfilled year of my life. And um, anyway, what was I saying? So yeah, just one day at a time, isn't it? You know, I never thought it was possible and it certainly is. But, you know, for me, I had to follow all my sponsor suggestions. I was doing my regular meetings, everything she'd done. You know, in the end, it was just like, and it's like once I stopped fighting it and was open to it, I don't know, it's like things just started. It was like this ripple effect, you know, the way and the measuring. Sometimes I hear people kind of not moan about it, but say it was difficult. In my head, I thought I'm never going to be able to do that. Do you know what? Way and the measuring has not been a problem for me. In fact, I kind of enjoy it, to be honest. I quite like preparing my foods. And, um, and I love what I eat, you know, I take my pet lunch into work and all my friends every day, someone in the office without foul has got their head in my lunchbox saying, oh, what have you got today? That looks lovely, that smells lovely and I can't cook either. Um, so anyway, that's kind of like, that's what happened really. That was my experience, you know, doing the meetings, doing the suggestions. I have worked the steps in grey sheets. I didn't start the steps straight away, but I don't know if that matters, but I have worked the steps and... I still find myself doing a lot of writing, to be honest, recently around fears and resentment. You know, I just loads of stuff has started. I feel like my first year in grey sheets was like this pink cloud. I felt so much gratitude and, and I still feel that today. But I feel like other feelings are surfacing now. But thank God, you know, everyone here and my sponsor and there's so many people who, you know, have shown me kindness and shared their experience with me. Um. So what is life like today? Uh, life today is like, it's just, it's just different. You know, I feel like everything is the same, but different. Um, the amount of time I've got, you know, in between meals, it's like, I still feel, to be honest, I still feel a bit crazy in my head. Like I just give you this example, you know, it's way day to day. I've really struggled with my weight, you know, it just hasn't been coming off. And I was convinced this month, not I thought I'd put on weight, I was convinced without a doubt, you know, and my sponsor, like, she doesn't have anything. She's like, we'll, we'll talk on the first, you know, she just, that's it. But this month, and I have had, you know, I've really been struggling for about the last seven or eight months. My weight hasn't really changed in grey sheets. You know, I've been exercising, following all the suggestions. And this month I've got on the scales without... I was convinced, you know, and obviously I've lost today. Couldn't believe it. And you know what? The first thing I said to my sponsor was, do you think my scales are broke? You know, I'm still a bit nuts around this stuff. And um, sorry, I'm going back a little bit, but I do want to maybe share this stuff. And like, it's been really hot in London the last couple of weeks. Not so much now, but I feel like all my issues around my body have resurfaced. You know, I feel like since I've been in grey sheets, 
something's changed you know like it's like a more kinder I, I just feel like I've become more accepting and kinder to myself and my body through just kind of putting my food on the scales to be honest but a lot of this stuff has resurfaced and feeling quite uncomfortable in my own skin the last few weeks has um come back up for me and like this feeling of feeling repulsive you know like this voice in my head that I just you know I should just tell to shut up and go away but anyway that that's there but having said that, in my experience in Gracie, that is a lot less, you know, I feel like the peace of mind I have today is a lot less. Like I rarely, you know, the last few weeks, I think are a bit of exception. But since I've come into Gracie, I don't think about my body in the same way. I just, I'm not saying That's I love it. Thank you, Nan. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, anyway, loads of things have changed. You know, the way I look after myself, my personal hygiene, like before Gracie, to be honest, I was, it was just appalling, you know, I didn't leave my bed, like my hair's clean today, my body's clean today, my home's clean, I've changed my bed today, got fresh bedding on my, you know, none of this is easy, I had to com commit it all to my sponsor this morning, because I knew if I didn't say out loud, the chances were I wasn't going to do it, and um, things like that, the relationships I've got, you know, with my mum and dad, I've always been really blessed, but I feel like they are just so special to me, you know, and I feel like I'm maybe a better, better at being a daughter. You know, I'm a much more mindful of my character defects and oh, just stuff. I just feel, you know, I'm just a bit better at being present because I've not got all that crap going on in between my ears. And, you know, my, I've got a brother and sister. I've, well, I've got an older brother as well, but my, I've got a younger brother and sister. My sister's 10 years younger than me. And I've never done anything to try and have a relationship with her. I mean, I love her dearly, but you would never think that. And I think it's just because I've just been in the food, you know, it's like I've just had this cloud or, or whatever, I don't know, but it's like I've just been shut off to the world and now I'm not eating, like these things have suddenly become like, you know, I've got a burning desire now to at least try and have a relationship with my younger sister and find out, you know, what she likes and anyway, I'm trying to do that and, um, you know, a couple of other things, I'm trying to be a better friend, like see my friends get out of the house and you know, I know we've been in the height of COVID, but I've done more in COVID and in lockdown than I have done, you know, in my 39 years of life. I have seen my friends, you know, I've been out to eat in grey sheets, weighed and measured. Um, I feel like I'm not, you know, I don't know who it is, but just so much, you know, my life is really beautiful today. Um, and... Do you know, I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't know what else to say. So I don't want to ramble on, but I'm so grateful that, you know, I'm not eating, I'm not binging anymore. I'm not abusing laxatives. I know I've talked a little bit about hating myself, but generally speaking, Grace, I don't hate myself and that I can concentrate on things that are really important and meaningful for me, which I couldn't do when I was in the food. Thank you.